So now that the bar is gone, the motor is basically as far back as what I can get it. Next thing up is I ordered some more 420 chain because I didn't have enough. I use RK420. Uh, there will be a link in the description. So once I get my chain, I can sit the motor to where it's aligned with the wrist sprocket. I can drill the holes in the motor plate to bolt it down. My GPS order finally came in. This is not sponsored. Pay full price for this. So I have the CT100 seat for the DB130. The 12 inch seat, I believe it is. Uh, I have my quarter inch fuel line. I think it's like 10 feet of it. I have my ape hangers that's gonna go on the bike, which should look dope and make my rider position a whole lot better. And I also have my my handlebar risers. All right, this thing looking like something now. I found two sockets in my toolbox. One is a spark plug socket. The other one is 11 16th socket. Probably polish these up real nice so they shine. Um, but everything is mounted up. Eight, the eight hangers are mounted up. I got the brake mounted up. So the 65 inch cable is a little long, but it's perfect. I do like these ape hangers and although I have not set on it yet, this should be a very comfortable ride height with the handle being up this high. Should be very, very comfortable. All right, so I got my chain in from Amazon. Of course, I went with the RK420 chain. I put the motor on there, I already had it aligned and everything. So the two back holes are there. The front holes are there, and then I normally do an outline, outline around the block. So if I need to put it back on, I have a reference. So now I'm going to drill these holes, and I need to find four bolts and four nuts to mount it down. All right, got the drills hold. Got the drills hold. Got the holes drilled. Now let's see if they're actually in the right spot. So I got the motor bolted in. When it rolls, I don't hear any binding. The chain is not binding. But I do have way too much chain slack here. I'm going to slot the mountain holes in the frame. And then that way it should give me some adjustment with the uh, how much slack that I have in this chain. All right, I got the second set of holes drilled. Now, I'm just gonna cut out the material in between. All right, now we have the notches in here. So now let's get the motor on, get the chain reconnected, and let's see if we can take some of that slack off. The motor's back on. Chain has less slack in it than what it did before. And everything is rolling nice and smooth. Let's get the bike down. Get some gas in it and see how and if she rides. How far she gonna lean? Well, she leans a good little bit. So here she is on the ground for the first time officially, and she looks mean. I'm happy with how that looks. That looks that looks nice. That's as the, the young kids would say, that's mint. This looks really nice. Oh man, I, I'm really digging how this looks. Oh man, it looks good. So, let me get some gas in it. And let's see if we can get it started.
So, hey, first ride went pretty good. I mean, the brakes stopped. The upper shock bracket seems to be holding on. Fine, so we'll leave it like that for now. Um, V1 is just like a bolt-on scenario. I mean, but as far as the first ride goes, I mean, success. I have no complaints. We did it all, you know, besides the chain need to be tensioned and the jet need to be jetted up from a 95 to a like I said 125 130 but hey I cannot complain about that so that'll be it for this video until next time peace